Hi, this is Hussein, and welcome back to the fifth session of Modernizing Application with Azure and Kubernetes Hands-On Series. In this session, we're going to deploy application to Azure Kubernetes Service. I will start this off giving some high-level architecture overview from both Kubernetes and Azure perspective. And then we will get into the demo where we will push our images to the container registry and deploy application to Azure Kubernetes cluster using KubeXTL. For the prerequisites, you need Azure subscription or Azure account so you can try this out. And if you need to connect to Azure from your local dev environment, you need to have Azure CLI and Kubernetes CLI installed. However, you can use the Azure Cloud shell that already has Azure CLI pre-installed and configured to connect to your Azure subscription as well as KubeXTL. So going back to the architecture, this is a high-level diagram of the application component that we will deploy on AKS in this session in addition to the Azure services. First of all, we will have our Azure uh, subscription. We will have AKS on that Azure. You remember the Kubernetes node that we have created using Azure CLI where we specify the count of nodes to add to the cluster node pool. So this is your actual uh, Kubernetes node. And Azure behind the scenes will create a virtual network, subnets, and all necessary services that make up the whole cluster. I'm not showing all of it here to avoid overwhelming the diagram with more details. Now going back to our application, we have three containers. If you recall, the front end, the UI, the back end, which is a products API, and our Mongoose database. In order to deploy it in AKS, we will create the following Kubernetes objects for both the back end and the front end. The deployment, which manages the replica sets and provides declarative updates capabilities. The replica set, which specifies the number of instances running at a given time. And the pod, which holds the actual running container that serves our application. Also, we need to expose our pod, maybe internally inside the cluster or externally to the public. So we need to create a service which will be the entry point to our application. For now, I'm going to expose both the backend and the frontend to the outside world and make it accessible to the public. The standard way we can do this is using load balancer services. The load balancer service type will leverage the cloud provided mechanisms to provision and configure a load balancer. Azure will, will provision one public IP for each service with an Azure standard load balancer with all its configured uh, load balancing rules, health probes, and front-end IPs. In this situation now, we can reach out to application by hitting those public IPs which will route the traffic through the Azure uh, load balancer and then hit the services inside the cluster. So now it's time to deploy our application to Azure Kubernetes cluster. First of all, I have to build my images for the application. I don't have them uh, ready in my local environment, so I need to build the image for the UI using build the command, specifying a name for the UI as UI, and specifying then the directory where my local uh, Docker file exists. So this is front end. I will do the same for um, the back end, specifying the directory where my uh, local file exists, and then specifying the name to the image. I will call it back end. Great, now I should have my images. So, this is the back end and this UI, and you see here the tag is latest because. I didn't specify a tag once I, spec I put the image name. The next step is to tag that image. But before doing so, we need to get the uh, login server name for the container registry. So I'm getting the names now for all container registries that exist in my subscription. This is my container registry. It says login server name. Now I need to tag my local image backend with the login server name, specifying the uh, repo. I 
I will do the same for the Y. If I have tagged my image, I would specify um, the tag appended to the repo name here, like V1. After I tag my images, I can see the tagged images now. This is the tagged image for the UI, this is for the backend. So now I need to push those images to the container registry. First of all, I need to log in to the container registry. Specify the name, which is product store CR. Once I'm logged in, I'm ready to use docker push command and let's list the images again so this is the login this is the uh, image docker push so now it's pushing each layer of this image to the container registry and creating a repo name back in and with an uh, image tag as latest. So to recap here, what we have done is we uh, went and built the image for the UI for the backend API, and then we tagged those images with a login server name. After that, we were we logged into the container registry and we were ready to push those uh, tag con images to the container registry. This is taking a while now. So what I'm gonna do is I will do the same for the front end. Once my images are pushed, I can navigate to the resource group and then the container registry. And then after that, I have to go to the repositories. I would see my uh, registry repositories created. This is a back end. I believe it's already pushed. This is my image with tag as latest. If you go back to the comment, this might be, okay, that's great. What about the other one? This is already also pushed. So if you refresh this, we have another UI, and this is the also the uh, image for the UI application tag as latest. So now it's step to connect with the Azure Container Registry. I can go back to the uh, sorry to the Kubernetes cluster, and here in order to establish a connections. I can use this command, Azure get AKS get credentials. Once I'm logged into the Azure Container Registry, I can use kubectl commands to connect to the cluster. So let's see how many nodes we have in our cluster. We have one node, that's great. So let's start deploying our application to um, the cluster. I've created a folder inside my Visual Studio application, like inside the source code. This is called K8 folder, and I have the back end and the front end YAML file, which actually manifests files that represents the deployment and the service that we need to deploy to Kubernetes. Here I have a deployment for the back end application and specify the number of the replicas, the instances that we're running. It's num I have just one pod running, and, on, and after that, we'll have the template for the pod, right? So under the pod, I will have the containers. I have a container called backend API, and this is where you need to specify where your container uh, image exists on the container registry. I have now here bound backend uh, and the latest tag, and this container is running on port 80. Also, I have my service, uh, my service which represent like the uh, proxy where the traffic will come in, and uh, I created it as a load balancer, so it will have public IP, 
Also notice here we have a selector. So this service will forward traffic to all pods that have that match the same selector, the same label products API. And that's why we see those pods are labeled as products API here. So the same for the front end, I have a deployment, I have number of the replicas, and I have a template of the pod, and I have the containers listed under that pod. And this is the container registry, and this is the UI uh, and the image tagged as latest. The same, I have a service, I have a loop balancer, and this, this label will match with the uh, current label here. And the service also is created as a load balancer. So now let's go to the KA directory and let's start deploying our application to the cluster. So I'm using kubectl command again. Apply to apply the, the file. So let's apply first the front end or the UI. So here Kubernetes is created or created my deployment and service. I will do the same for the back end. That's great. If I go and start uh, to list my pods using get pods command, so I can see that I here I have the UI running and sorry the API running and the UI running. Let's list the services to get the public IPs. So this is the backend API service and this is the uh, public IP that Azure provisioned for me. So this is type load balancer. So now I can navigate to my front end application. Okay. And if I get products, I will see no products. This is because the API is running now, but I don't have any data because we haven't provisioned or created a Mongo database container. And this is what we will doing in the next session. We will migrate our Mongo database to Cosmos DB.